I've got trolls. I got, I got trolls, trolls in, in the way. same area codes. Area. Area. Codes. Trolls. 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 <laughs> Welcome back, yes, to the studio and to the L. Duncan Show with Gary Streisky. We here. It's good to, like, look you in the face. This is great, L. You know, a lot of people were saying the the Zoom, they, while, while great, while fun, just not the same. It's not. Just not the same. It's a lot harder to flirt with yeah, you through Zoom. Yeah, the rumors kind of died down, but they are going to be stoked today. Yeah, I like to get them back yep. up. Um, so sometimes in this social media world... Okay, you hear a lot about microdosing, right? The look in your <laughs> eyes is like, where are we going with this? So when it comes to social media, I'm a microdoser. Okay. I sort of get in, get out, get what I need. Sure. I've got partnerships. I like to talk about that. Obviously, it's important. Yep. I like to check in for news. And I like to promote the L. Duncan Show with Gary Streisky. But sometimes I just totally disconnect. And I start feeling... Like something's happening Kay. involving me. And I don't know what it is because I've got every filter set. Like I protect my peace. Okay. Social media never bothers me. I've got great discipline. Yesterday I just started getting all these like goofy <laughs> ass texts. Just goofy. Uh huh. And I'm like, what is going on? And I did a little deep diving and I realized yeah. they're taking issue with something that has happened on my recent travels in South Carolina. I visited the women's basketball program. We did an open practice for Sports Central. Okay. But I thought this was a teachable moment for some folks. So I'm here to tell you, I'm going to pull the curtain back a little bit on television and in particular sports center, 90% of what we do here. Some people found out for the first time that we ask questions we already know the answer to. Weren't supposed to tell the people that one, Al. So Don's team has a group of men called highlighters yep. right and it's it's something that everyone knows women's basketball programs tend to play against men mm -hmm. in their practice squads right that's their practice squad team their scout teams if you will yep. they're former high school players whoever they are in particular the highlighters at south carolina are a special group of guys you have to try out they have to study film they are integral to preparing what has been a dynastic team. And because of that, I thought it would be important to sort of highlight that mm -hmm. on SportsCenter. So before we go to do this shot, I look at Dawn Staley. What up, girl? Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. What's I saw her watch. That was nice. Always. Louis Vuitton Doc. Yep. And I'm like, hey, okay, so for this particular segment, you know, we'd already talked to her. We'd done a couple of hits. I was like, for this particular segment, we're going to talk about your, your practice squad. So I'm probably just going to set you up with something like, you know, uh, hey, uh, you know, let's address the elephant in the room. Who are these dudes Who out here on the court, dudes? right? Who are these dudes? What's up with all these dudes. And she's like, got you. She's like, all right. And then, and then you give all the particulars on the highlighters because let's highlight them. They don't get a lot of love. Let's highlight them. Let's do a whole segment on the guys that help your fantastic women get ready. They get championships. Get they get rings. Yeah, they get rings and all of those things, right? So Dawn goes on. So all of a sudden, there has become this groundswell of people going, oh, my God, L. Duncan doesn't even know that women have to compete against far superior men to practice. And it's not about that, because that's misogynistic and stupid, and, but it's about the idea that we ask questions we know the answer to because we are speaking for a sports center audience and maybe someone that isn't familiar with women's basketball Correct. and maybe someone who is going who are those guys out there that they're practicing against yes. and some people that do television and i'm not besmirching them some people that do television sort of abide by the i also want to show you how informed that i am mm -hmm. i am absolutely fine always asking the stupid question on behalf of someone who's at home asking the stupid question. It's not for me to empty the chamber on everything that I know Correct. about women's basketball, of which I know a lot more than the people who are coming after me right now. How do you think, Gary, and I want the people at home to think about this, when I sit down with Dan Orlovsky and I ask him a question, 
How do you think that we always have supporting video behind it? Yes. They're ready for the answer. We already know what they're going to say, folks. Yes. I know exactly what he's going to say. It's produced. It's television. You have to allow the subject of the interview to operate at the highest level of their intelligence. You have to you have to allow them to look the part. You have to allow them to wear the expert hat. Although we know the answers to these questions, yes. we are not having to, in that situation, operating at the highest level of intelligence because then we would be taking the job away from the Dan Orlovskis or for the Don Staley's and explain that. We're nothing but a bridge Correct. between the information and the question. And we're just this human bridge. It's like, Don Staley, come walk across this bridge and deliver this information to some people at home who might not know the answer to. So Correct. Now Listen, you know the secret. <laughs> this is all organized chaos. And all that being said, sometimes it's produced and I'll find a way to f*** <laughs> it up. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Also true. Also true of me as well. For sure. Listen, I have asked plenty of dumb Yo, questions. Yo, Gary, make sure you ask this question, and then I just completely avoid or miss or forget asking the one question that this entire segment is built around. It's your boy. <laughs> <laughs> just hit him with a yeah. one headed. My bad. <laughs> we'll get him next time. Yeah. Ooh, you could say that MLB is saying that. We'll get him next time. Uh, World Series has concluded. The Texas Rangers have taken it. Uh, Finally, Dallas gets the championship they sweep. have been yearning for. Forever. Yeah, that's, and it's the that's, Rangers. That's the championship that Dallas has wanted for so many years. That's the one. <laughs> Yo, how does Jerry Jones feel this morning? You mother. You know what he's doing right now? Trying to take Corey Seager's measurables and yeah, see if no there's doubt. any chance he could put him on the he's star. Like, can you? What position could you play? <laughs> like, can we set you out wide? I don't know. What can you do for yes. us? Um, the problem is, is that this is shaping up, and we're, we're waiting. This is Thursday. We're waiting to sort of get the final total of what would have been the clincher yesterday's ratings. But this is on trend to be the lowest rated World Series of all time. Not great. Yeah. Especially when there was so much excitement, so much momentum, and you're listening to and you're seeing baseball fans um, here love the game. First sport we I both first like baseball. Organized yeah. sport that I played. It was my Me first too. job. I was an umpire for like ten years, going through school and college <laughs> and everything was. like that. I love baseball. I do not like the seemingly niche sport it has become. You put it a good way. It's sort of regional and you're like no it's not baseball's exciting well you got to remember if you're talking about it on twitter or on x whatever social media platform you're talking in that echo chamber of other people who are watching so it might seem like it's a bigger deal but the numbers indicate that it's not which is unfortunate what, what are the numbers yeah the numbers aren't great gary i've got them here like right now this is averaging about eight and a half million viewers which would be the worst the previous worst was 2020 dodgers massive team massive yeah. market under 10 million viewers that's terrible yeah uh and then before that it was 2021 which was my braves which hurts my heart yes. but i remember at the yes. time I, the braves are a s small market team i didn't think that braves astros would necessarily be huge but that did 11.74 million Oof. viewers and then 2022 last year the astros phillies did 11.76 million views. So the last few Oof. years, it's been trending this way, but they really just fell off a cliff from even last year. You're talking about almost 4 million viewers less. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah, that's especially that's because bad. of all the existential changes that they made in baseball. Where they were like, we're going to create more offense, create less lulls. We're shaving 30 minutes off a game. There's going to be more hits. There's going to be more action. There's going to be more stolen bases, more home runs, more hits. Did that equate to more viewers? No. And obviously, listen, it's a slow burn. It's a slow buildup, I guess, if you're resetting, I guess, the the in, the entire philosophy that was baseball up to this point. But that's bad. Monday Night Football, a, r a random Monday Night Football game does 15, 16 million. <laughs> that outrated the World Series. And that's not good because that's a partner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're not we're not putting it under the thumb and be like, ah, it will be you suck. This is bad. No, no, this is just bad for us as a yeah. whole. Well, I, I think that this is sort of trending because to baseball's credit, they listened. 
It might have taken a while to get there, yep. but they listened. And they made these sweeping changes, and they worked. They all worked in the first year. More offense, less walks, less every – like, it's all – baseball's never been more exciting or fun to Correct. watch if you like baseball, right? We had the Braves alone just yamming and raking and all of these big teams. The problem is that we haven't had those blue blood staple teams. Mm -hmm. Like the Yankees aren't good. The Red Yankees Sox are aren't bad. good. Sox and baseball bad. is such a, especially baseball playoffs, is such a momentum yes. builder. You have to be invested in the teams from the wild card series. Yes. And if those teams in the wild card series aren't particularly interesting to you, a la a D-backs or a Rangers or some of these other teams that we had, Miami, even Atlanta, you – are not going to sort of begin with the groundswell of support, and it's certainly not going to build from there. And I knew that this series was going to be poorly rated when it was the Rangers, yes. right? Maybe the 15th least important team in Texas. <laughs> and the D-backs, who we talked about on this team, didn't even think that they were going to be here. You have to have teams that you want to actively root against also sure. as well. So you have yes. to have a villainous team. So the Phillies would have been better. Right. A Dodgers team would have been better. The Astros would have been better because everybody outside of Houston hates them. Right. Obviously, the Yankees are good for the sport. The Red Sox are good for the sport. They have to be in there to, to garner any outside attention or care from anybody. Um, that's an issue. Yeah. Big time issue for, the, for, for Major League Baseball. I, I want to put like a, I don't think we're in crisis mode. Next to a, yeah, but again, look at the two teams that were in this World Series. Um, I thought game one was predictive of what was going to be uh -huh. a fantastic series. Uh -huh. So as a baseball person, I was like, okay, these like aren't the two sexiest Extra team in the world. Walk-off home run from I'll the guy. Correct. I'll take it. And then he's out for the rest of the series, two games later. For the rest of the series, right. <laughs> like, damn. Like, all your name recognition went Fast. out, too. Max Scherzer. I totally forgot Jacob DeGrom now is a World Series champion. Correct. I mean, damn. Yeah. Scherzer's done. Shout out to Will Smith, by the way. First person in history to win a World Series three straight years on three different teams. He's doing it for the brand because the other Will Smith has <laughs> okay. been taking so many beatings. I work at the Worldwide Leader, and I just learned something. Damn. Yeah, yeah the reliever Will Smith. Okay, I, I, uh, yeah. I you know, it all started with the Braves. I didn't need that. And then he went to the Astros, and now he is a Ranger. So shout out to you, man. He's got whatever Will Smith has got, it's winning. But I, I want to put a – I want to put a, a, a stamp on it and go, let's see. Let's see if next year, if they don't have some bigger names. And honestly, I think they've got to reseed. And I'm not even just saying this no, as a Braves fan. I think that you're asking people to pay attention for 162 games for an entire summer. And then it, you're essentially rendering all of that useless by not reseeding in the postseason. So that's not great either. You've got these sort of teams that are building, that have these fan bases that are watching their 104, 105 win teams go out in the first round because they've been sitting. I like to believe I'm better than this, but I got totally bamboozled today. Today? I got bamboozled and let us stray. The day is just I starting. I let my fury and my personal distaste uh -oh. for the Raiders, uh, as a Broncos yeah, fan, yeah. get in the way of good judgment. And I fell for that bull story oh, you did. <laughs> that Josh McDaniels. <laughs> let me just, for those of you that haven't seen this stupid thing that's going around, I mean, but listen, I could, true, I mean, I. Let me just read to you, Gary, let me read to them what it says. The last straw, and this is one of those things where it's just like typed up on it. Yes. Nobody knows where it came yes. from. It just appears. This must be true, though. The last straw was when McDaniels, who's well known around league circles as a guy who goes all out for Halloween, came to the Raiders facility dressed as Mark Davis the day after losing to the Lions on Monday Night Football. Davis took it in stride at first. He appeared to laugh, and he even ordered his now trademark P.F. Chang's lunch delivered to McDaniels to complete the look. After the two had eaten, Davis suggested that McDaniels read his fortune cookie, which read, you're fired, hot shot, according to multiple sources who viewed the dessert. Now, this sounds like horse <laughs> But I, so intricate. just loving, mm -hmm. sad, miserable Raiders fans, I fell for it. I started sending it to people, and I was like, is this true? You know, but I was like still like I, I kind of like knew it wasn't true, but I just still wanted to just disseminate yeah. it. I wanted to get it to everyone. Get a load of this story. It can't be true, but spread it to everyone. And I thought, what an incredible way to get fired through a fortune. Yeah, cookie. which is also hilarious. One that they called that a dessert. 
in the story. That's when I Thank that's you. when I knew it was false. False. It's not a, it's not a dessert. It's a side dish. Uh, and two, I just want to picture Mark Davis having a bowl of fortune cookies just at his disposable re- ready with different fortunes. That he's like, this one says I'm fired. This one says here's a promotion. Yeah. This one says have a nice day. This one actually has a fortune. He was yeah. just like, mm, there's the fired one. Just uh, slide it in there. Get a load of that dessert. And then it just says you're fired. Yeah. Because you can, commi- you can really commission custom fortune cookies. Your own fortune cookies. cookies, but you can't do it I- in an hour. True. That's why I want to envision him just having a bowl ready to go. Ready to just go. ready to go. He just pulls out his yeah. favorite fortune yeah, yeah, yeah. cookies. And they're and labeled. He goes, uh, you could understand why you'd want to fall for something like that or why you'd be so mad. it's awesome. It's been bad, but I am wondering if getting fired, particularly from the Raiders, is maybe the greatest job of all time. Because when I first saw this story, yeah. I was like, this can't be true. He wouldn't do that. No one would want to go coach for a, an owner that would do something that douchey. But then I was like, yo, but this is the same owner that is now reportedly between John Gruden and Josh McDaniels paying somewhere between 40 and $80 million just for these two dudes to go away. I want to be that rich, man, just to have that much bread that you can just do away with your problems and be like, you know what, it's fine. My fortune says I'm good for it. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. But I did believe that story because McDaniels being a disciple of Bill Belichick and that viral um uh, clip with Randy Moss inviting him to the skating rink, Belichick and Linda, and he showed up as a pirate and uh, Linda was whatever, the pirate's booty. Booty? I guess is that what you could say. Yeah. So I'm like, well, Apple doesn't fall too far from the tree, so maybe Josh McDaniels is super heavy into Halloween, a la Bill Belichick. And I'm like, Apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. This is believable. I'm trying to convince myself that it is, yeah. but we know it's not. No, it's not all believable right. at well. all, and it didn't happen. Um, and I'm wondering, can we definitively, as the Raiders has now been turned over to – oh, there it is. Okay. So now we're That's just good. learning in real time from Jackson, who's young, That's good. that yeah. Uh, yeah. someone started this rumor, PFT started yeah. this rumor. Okay. That's good. It makes total but sense. Here's the thing, it was good. It worked. Capital J Journal. Some t- yeah, <laughs> yeah, it Some works. Stuff he, he says is actually true. That's deceiving. But I think that we can. I think we can go ahead right here and come to a conclusion that the Bill Belichick yeah. coaching it's tree bad. has no branches. It's rotted. It is. It's rotted. Yes. It has. It's like the Charlie Brown Christmas tree. Yes. If you remember, maybe like a branch or two. But nobody loves this one. It's got a sturdy trunk, and that trunk. That sturdiness is only Bill Belichick. Let's go through a few. Okay. Joe Judge. Yeah. No. Sorry. With the Giants for two seasons, 10 and 23. And then d- c- didn't even have the reins fully of the offense last year. Had to split it with Matt Patricia, Correct. who's a defensive guy. Also on the list. There it is. With the Lions. Oof. His career record, 13, 29, and 1. And this is after he plucked people from the New England front office and plucked half of their defense. Facts. Couldn't replicate it. Josh McDaniels, of course, he had that brief and horrific stint with the Broncos. And then the Colts. <laughs> and Yeah, which didn't even Six last, hours. where he was just like, psych. <laughs> He's like, ah, gotcha, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> and then a season and a half with the Raiders. Career record, 20 and 33. Oof. Okay, Romeo Cornell. I love Cro- Romeo. Uh-huh. But I thought you were about to remix his name and call him Chromio. Chromio. <laughs> that's He's a singer. That's kind of sick. <laughs> There's a singer named that's Chromio. Oh, for real? Yeah, he's Canadian. Oh, okay. Yeah, I told you I love Canadians. You know. Romeo, I, I'm, yeah. let's be real. Yeah. Eric Mangini. Come that's on. a hard the no. Fuck Mangini's, uh, like if they saw each other, they it would they straight up scrap. It's on site between those two. Two head coaching stints with the Jets and the Browns. Yep. 33 and 47 record. Oof. Brian Dayball. TBD. Yep, TBD. Jerry Stout. Hey, yeah. ma- made the playoffs last year. Yeah. 11, 13, and yep. 1. Yep. Um, as And 1 and 1 in the yep. playoffs. Al Gro. Cool. Just one the guy who invented the internet. Job. Okay. Oh no, that's, that's Al, Gore. Al Gore. Oh. My bad. My my bad. Honest mistake. Nick Saban. Okay. Cool. Asterisk. College. College. <laughs> Nick Saban. <laughs> College. Head coaching. Nick Saban. Fifteen and seventeen in those yeah, two years. Yeah. With yeah, the yeah. Brian Flores. Beeflo. Didn't go Ooh. well. Twenty-four and twenty-five. Not nearly as bad yep. as some of the other dudes yep. on this list. Yep. Bill O'Brien. Damn. Long stint with the Texans. 
really the only one on here that has a winning record, 52 and 48. God, these dudes keep getting jobs, man. Back with Bill. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Do you sort of feel, Charlie, you think he feels a responsibility because he unleashed them onto the world yeah, to bring like, them back home? Damn, all right, come on back. Call your little monsters back. I need help, too. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. The, 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 there's enough evidence here that says it's not good. Yeah, I think that the verdict is in, and the verdict is... Belichick got the juice. When it comes to this tree, um... It needs to be... They suck it. <laughs> See that transition? That was good. Joel Embiid's getting fined again because he loves Triple H. We know this. If you don't know, Joel Embiid of the Sixers loves Triple H, and he's been doing the suck it thing for a while. In fact, he just did it in January. X Generation X. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And he... Just like any great outfit, yes. you have to wait a few months. You gotta wait a few months. True. Let people forget that it That's exists. True. That's true. He displayed the suck it again. Nice, dude. And he's getting fined thirty five thousand dollars. Conversely, he gets an invite to WrestleMania. Is going to be in Philadelphia. <sighs> They're like, you can come do the suck it all you yeah, want. Yeah, that was that was strategically planned. Gosh, dude, what a what a what a heady guy. I, he is. Well, he's not even going to be there. They're on the road, so he will not be able to Damn, be in Philadelphia mind. for WrestleMania. Retracted. You gave him too much credit. But I have a confession to make. Talk to me. Wait. For an entirely too long period of time, yeah. my go-to was the, was the suck it. Yeah. Wha yeah, but I don't welcome, have that thing that you every can millennial. suck, Gary. So it was felt stupid that a woman would just, I would just, ah, I loved it. <laughs> it's, I still it do. It makes it funnier. I still celebrate. <laughs> I had to catch myself. It makes it so funny. And what, give me some context. You're just like, you're like at the tire shop and he's like, ma'am, I'm sorry, but we're going to have to replace those filters. It's going to be an extra 30 bucks. And you're like, okay, well, how about this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I do. I'm just running around West Hartford telling everybody just to suck, suck it. it. Suck it. Suck it. Excise tax. Uh. It's, it's purely in like a, I'm unleashing my rage. Like I'm unleashing all of the pent up rage and it's aggression. It's an outlet for yeah. you, yeah. I go, my go-to is suck it, yeah. and then it, for those of you, and it's a very small community of you, but if you have, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you've seen Grandma's Boy. Yeah, you'll never have mental legs. I always do that. Should it week? Dance week, <laughs> always. <laughs> what a classic movie. And I've been doing that for a, for a long time. You know what makes me mad about that? Is for as long as I've known you, you have looked down on me, spoke to me condescendingly for dabbing, for dabbing. And you're out here throwing the Generation X suck it? That's unfair because you're allowed to do that. If I'm allowed to do that, then all of a sudden I'm on some list. All of a sudden I get a ticket. All of a sudden I'm in Building 16 HR. That's not nice. That's no, not fair. No, Gary, it's because politicians that are 70 years old, aren't doing the suck it. They were doing the dab. That's when it died. And you refuse to accept it. You refuse to accept that once senators are doing the dab, it's over, Gary. No senators are doing the suck it. Well, I'd rather have a senator dab on me than a senator say suck it. All right, you brought a giant box into the room. Oh, I did. And I'm intrigued. Jackson, would you mind helping me? I love the idea that Gary thinks that anything that he got, I didn't get. Well, I'm just saying, like, you didn't bring it in. So I figured, hey, the NBA in-season tournament starts tomorrow. It does. Okay. Shit. <laughs> hey, if you know what's in this box, that might be bad. I do. I hope there's not glass everywhere. Gary, oh, close it. Oh, God. You guys, this is going awry. Yes. Well, it's, a it's actually a wheat. <laughs> NBA so in-season tournament starts tomorrow, and our good friends at the association sent us some stuff. Yeah, to make a, a drink called the Playmaker, and it's got Hennessy. And, and, and that means that you're going to be giving me that bottle because there's zero chance you can handle Hennessy. That, wait, what? First of all, less than zero. You got chance. a bottle, and I just want to say thank you. And speaking of Hennessy, Katie Hennessy, uh, wonderful in our marketing and PR in department. Talent department, uh huh. Talent department. Made sure I got one of these. So well, the best part is, is that the my, so the box shows up and my daughter is five and she's like, what is this mommy? And I'm like, oh, it's an NBA treasure box. Uh, you know, I, I knew that this was coming. So, so we open that top 
box, which is just like, again, it's all the accoutrements to make yourself a drink. They've got the, s- the stir, the spinner, they've got the you know alcohol and the mixers and all that, and they tell you how to make this cocktail. So she's hella disappointed because she's five, right? And well, we haven't started her on the alcohol. We're going to wait until she's at least 12. And so, but then there's an additional box, a bonus box underneath. And right if now. you're watching on YouTube right now, you're seeing what Gary's holding, Gold but if you're not, let me coins. describe it. Gold chocolate coins, because the box itself that all the liquor came in is essentially a bracket. It's a bracket. So you can fill things in with chocolate. So she was very excited. So thank you to the NBA yes. for combining what, pol- you know, what, what grownups yes. like. Chocolate. With what c- cocktails and chocolate. With what kids like and helps them sleep on planes. A little bit oh of whiskey. Just, yeah. Well, Just that's rub it on the gums. This is like one of many things we're going to argue about apparently on the way out. Yeah. Because we stand on opposite sides of a coin. And I'm going to die on this hill. Don't please don't. There's a video Taylor going Swift viral. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So there's a video that's going viral right now. I mean, honestly, you could Google this and a million of these will show up. But this woman's like berating this man. Clearly the flight is over and it's like, what's happening? And then you just hear her go, I'm allowed to put my seat back. Ugh. And I said, hell yeah, amen, sister. Oof. And you disagree. Yeah. You are of the ilk. That despite the fact that the chairs come as recliners, okay. you should just respect the stranger behind you and not give yourself peak levels of comfort whilst flying through the air? What? I think it's funny how you associate flying through the air and the ability to even attain peak levels of comfort. So I, I would rather just save that extra two inches for my common man or woman behind me. I'm so anti-reclining on a plane. That's so stupid. No, it's not. Why? It's just I feel terrible about it, and I don't want to. And that one inch of reclining ability, it's not make or break. It's not. Then why does it matter? If it doesn't make or break you, it's not, no, if no, it doesn't no, mean no, no, anything. it's not make or break for the if person. If it doesn't mean anything. No, yes, it L. does. Those seats sit forward, Gary. It's like, at some point when you're sitting straight up, you're almost sitting forward, especially when you're short like me, and that neck pillow thing that's built into the damn chair. You know that's bendable, right? I understand that, I but it's not bendable at the bottom, so I just sit forward like this a little bit, and it's weird. No so way. And that's so a you the problem. One you inch, need if a stretch. the one inch doesn't mean anything to you, then why does it mean anything to the person <coughs> behind it you? It doesn't mean... And if it's not acceptable, then why do they allow you to do it? it? Do, they have ashtrays on airplanes. And if you have a can problem you smoke with on airplanes? It, no. I am with you on an hour flight. I don't need to recline my chair from LaGuardia to Hartford. Kay. That's a 35-minute flight. We don't even lose... I'm flying to Australia, okay? I am going from JFK, going t- from story extreme time. to extreme. Story okay, time. Go. Should I open this? Sure. <laughs> I am going to Australia. I am flying from JFK. The layover will be in Dubai. But to get from JFK to Dubai is 13 hours. I have saved a lot of money and done a lot of wishing, planning, hoping, and praying to get an Emirates plane oh ticket. yeah, that's that's goaded. That's like a grail ticket. Lunge. Yeah. Okay? I paid a lot of money for this ticket. How much Kay? can you ask? Too much? Kids ain't going to college is all you need to know. Not on my dime anyway. We are not even 10 minutes into the trip, and I go to put my seat back and just relax and enjoy myself for this 13 hours. Got my ottoman in front of me. I go to recline, and as soon as I go to recline, the man behind me taps my shoulder and he just starts going no 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 and pointing at his wife like you can't recline because my wife is sitting here when I tell you I had been bottling up and waiting for a confrontation like this all my life I looked at that man and I said this is a 13 hour flight sir I am reclining my chair and there is nothing that you can do about it and if you have a problem with it I would suggest next time you fly private Damn. If you don't want me exercising my rights as a passenger, you can solve that problem by flying private. If you don't want to hear my baby cry, you can fly private. If you don't want to smell my breakfast, you can fly private. I mean, that's, that's a whole lot of money to fly private, L. Exactly. And none of us have it. So shut the f*** <laughs> up and sit there and take it. I thought you had more room in first class on Emirates. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. You do. That's the point. <laughs> I'm going to recline my chair. And the thing is, those chairs recline all the way. And you know what? Honestly, 
You were you're in his wife's lap? I mean, basically. But the person in front of me did the same thing. And once that recline train starts, the tr- you got to get on the train. Because then you're the one person getting smacked. That's my no. least favorite train. We're all reclining, and we're all enjoying ourselves. 13 hours, Gary. I'm not not reclining my, my seat for 13 hours. I'm sleeping. And you know what else? If you don't like that and you don't want to fly private, then you should do what I did. And you should get the very first row and then no one's in front of you and then no one reclines problem solved a lot of people going for that one seat l (laughs) well if you're ever on an airplane with me just know and you're sitting behind me just know that extra inch or two of space is going to remain yours i'm with you america but if you recline on me i'm gonna be pissed